I'm so pleased to have with me today Heather Wheelis, and Heather is HR Director at Millican in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Heather, uh, welcome to the Business of Innovation uh, podcast. Thanks, Gail. <laughs> You're so welcome. It's a pleasure to see you, and um, I know that you've been in your current role for uh, just shy of a, a year, and um, I just wanted to know a little bit more about what you do and how you came to be in this role. Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm the HR director for Millican. So I support the textile division, which is one of the largest divisions within the Millican organization. Um, In my particular role, I support the business side. So I really help and and support individuals who who run, let's say, um, the sales role. So sales team, product development, um, and a lot of the shared services group, which which is a pretty decent size of the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, I came to be to Millican. Actually, it was by accident. I um, it was through relationships, which which has been a, a key in I think my entire growth throughout my career is just knowing people and building those relationships. But um, anyway, a, an opportunity or through an acquaintance and that who worked with Millican, an opportunity came up and. Um, wasn't really looking, but again, had an opportunity to, to one, move a little bit closer to home because I was traveling quite a bit um, and just a little bit more focused again on the business and strategy and, and talent development and whatnot, which are really some of my passions. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, that's how I ended up at Millican and, and it's been a journey ever since. Mm-hmm. Roger uh, Millican is known for being highly innovative, and I think even the foundation that's been laid in the upstate of South Carolina, being an international center uh, with so many foreign uh, uh, headquarters here, many, many, and most people point back to Roger Millican because he started relationships like that, invited foreign uh, businesses to come here, work with his company, and um, so there, there must be that tradition at Millican of innovation and, and getting things done, but also doing them in new and different ways. Do you, do you, what do you find? Uh, absolutely. So even today, um, you'll hear that innovation is a core foundation of the entire business, no matter what division they're in. Um, and I think we're seeing some of that in these strange times that we're in, mm-hmm. is that ability to take um, our challenges of whatever the day brings and really use our core technologies and expertise in order to address those. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the, the nice stories or one of my favorite stories about Millican that I heard and I continue to hear is really their focus and, and Roger Millican's focus on being able to pivot a business. So if something has changed or if times around us have changed is really take those, again, technologies and, and um, resources and pivot the business to address the needs of of the world around us. And, and we've really been able to do that. Mm-hmm. And how has COVID-19 changed your, your role and what you're currently doing? Uh, it's changed it tremendously. So our focus before COVID-19, of course, was again, development and growth and expansion. And, and, you know, how do they, how do we help employees and, and individuals mm-hmm. and associates stretch and grow in their current roles? Now we're just helping them stay connected um, and really just checking on, I went from a, a focus on development and um, support to really just making sure that everybody's okay, right? So making sure that they have a connection, that they have someone to reach out to, that we do have individuals who um, who may be struggling with technology or they may just be struggling working in a new environment because mm-hmm. um, clearly people don't always adapt to change. And I think really helping them through that change process has been a key focus um, for the HR team recently and specifically for me. And how do you find that people are dealing with this, this particular time period? You know, do they seem to acclimate um, in general? How, what have you found? What have you seen? I, I find that they are getting used to their new normal. So it's, um, you know, some have taken a little longer than others, which is perfectly fine. Uh, sure. But I think getting used to a new normal of, you know, setting a schedule and making sure that they're connected and staying on top of priorities and really staying in conversations and in touch with team members. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think we've we've adapted to that very well. It'll be interesting. Our next challenge is going back into an office <laughs> environment and how we have to get reacclimated to that now that, that we're settled into our current space. So, um, yeah. so there is more change to come for sure. 
For sure. And um, what about you right now? What's your biggest challenge personally? Uh, well, still new to Millican, of course. I think my biggest challenge is, again, still trying to find opportunities to connect and really fit into the organization. Mm-hmm. So um, I try to go in on a consistent basis. Almost a day-to-day goal of mine is really to add value, whether it's to my team, to my, my uh, to the company, to, to wherever, but add value to the conversations and really making sure that I stay connected within those conversations and within those teams mm-hmm. uh, as much as I can. So that's probably been the biggest challenge because, again, I'm still a bit of a, a rookie in the Millican world. Yeah. Um, but but I think it's working. So every day I see improvements. And- How does it work with hiring these days? Um, are you doing all of that via Zoom, you know, interviews and so forth? Or is that sort of on hold right now? How is that working? So most of our hiring is on hold, just as, again, as we navigate through, um, you know, just through COVID in itself. And I think we've seen that with the majority of companies, but we do have open positions and we are interviewing via Zoom and um, actually we're using Microsoft Teams. So a shout out there, but, um, (laughs) but yeah, so we're doing video conferencing and and video interviews and, and whatnot. So, and thankfully we have those technology bases right now in order to, to keep these processes running. Otherwise it would just be, you know, a voice on the phone, which isn't always, um, which isn't always intuitive. Yeah. And, um, you know, you have a really interesting background. I want to shift gears just a little bit here, but you have an interesting background. And I know at one point you actually worked in the Middle East. So I just see you as someone who really knows how to pivot and, you know, change direction and uh, really be responsive to whatever needs to be done. Talk a little bit about that. And did that come up during your interview with uh, Milliken? Uh, absolutely. So uh, my time in the Middle East is probably the most, I, I guess, the most interesting part of my career. It it was really um, by accident. Mm-hmm. So I was um, I was in my, my early 30s. I'd never been outside of the U.S. And I had an opportunity um, for a position. And really, it's how I ended up in HR. I had an opportunity for a position um, to support an HR function uh, overseas. So this was, of course, um, during during the, the um, uh, Gulf War, but um, anyway, so I had an opportunity to support, and and at the time, I I really didn't have anything to stop me, so I said, "What? Why not?" <laughs> so um, I was scared to death. Um, again, I'd never been, I'd never really been away from home other than to go to college, which I went to Converse in Spartanburg, so that wasn't too terribly far away. Um, so I ended up overseas and I, I just found my niche. I, I found some great mentors. I found some great colleagues. I worked for some really good companies. And, um, and I learned from, from the pivot and innovation perspective, I learned just not to be afraid of that challenge. So, when, when, so now, I guess when I'm faced with some of those uncomfortable decisions and uncomfortable opportunities, um, I've kind of forced myself to step through that door now and realize that, gosh, what's what's the worst that could happen? And I guess at that time, I figured the worst that could happen is if I fail and I end up go, you know, I go home and I'm back to where I started, which mm-hmm. you know, again clearly wasn't the case. So it sounds like it really built your confidence to try new and different things, to perhaps listen to your instinct, uh, to um, just uh, be okay when sometimes it fails or sometimes it works, but, but being willing to try something new. I I would agree. So I think taking on some of those challenges, it does build some of that confidence. And I think it just gives you an opportunity to to realize again, that you're not going to know unless you actually do it. So, Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's, that's kind of where it took me. Um, again, I've made many decisions over the past probably 10, 15 years that, that have been, uncomfortable decisions, or maybe we're going to put me in an, uh, an unknown spot or, you know, a stretch assignment, et cetera. Um, but I've just, I've just learned to, to push myself and step forward and go ahead and, and try it. Um, mm-hmm. Again, with the understanding that if, if it doesn't work, then that's okay. Mm-hmm. Tell me, what do you feel like in your career has been perhaps your, your most proud moment, or what do you feel like you're most proud of? Um, pr- probably that actually. So again, I-, I was, I was a bit of a home girl. So I've, I've always lived in the upstate. Um, again, I never traveled out of the country and I surely never traveled by myself. 
Mm-hmm. So um, to go, I think, into that environment alone and with complete unknowns and find an opportunity or really take advantage of opportunities to where I, you know, I could grow and I could learn and I could be exposed mm-hmm. to other cultures and other, um, other you know, thoughts, just, just schools of thought mm-hmm. um, and really grow that into a very successful career is probably, probably the, the pinnacle of, of mm-hmm. you know, my career so far. So I'm really proud of that. Absolutely. And you said something else that uh, interested me. You said, whatever I'm doing, I'm tr- always trying to add value. Uh, where did that come from? Is that kind of a, something you grew up with? Is that, where did that come from, that extra, trying to do something just a little extra to make it a little better or see other ways, new ways, new, um, new ways to make it better? Yep. So I, I, I think that I've kind of learned that over, again, over time is by adding value, at least when I found opportunities to add value, then I found that that really opened doors. So it gave me more exposure to individuals. It gave me more exposure to organizations. Um, and, you know, by, by, by adding value to those individuals and to those organizations, again, it just allowed for additional steps in my career. So I just, I try to keep that as, as my mantra. So if I can add value into a discussion, if I can add value into a process, if I can add value you know, to, to a person or to an organization, then it's going to, it's just going to help. It helps them. It helps me. And and again, I continue to grow. And that really, I think has provided a lot of the learning opportunities that I've had too, because I think those individuals know I'm, I'm not afraid of that challenge. So, you know, I'll take it and I'll run with it and I'll try to add the most value I can. Um, I love that term. I, I feel like everybody should always be thinking in that regard. And I don't think, I guess I wanted to ask you too, what innovation means to you, uh, because um, we're trying to encourage students and even working professional students to, I would quote you, add value. But sometimes okay. adding value can mean changing process and different things that really is where I think innovation can come in. What does innovation co- mean to you? So I think to to me, innovation means to have the foresight and fortitude to shape the future. So whether that's your own future, whether that's the future of your team, or whether that's, again, the future of your organization. But but I think you have to have that foresight and really the fortitude. So you have to have the courage um, to make those changes, to shape the future. Um, I think it's not just adapting to you, but also being a change agent um, in order to help give that competitive advantage. So so to me, that's kind of encompassing what what innovation is. So what are you, what are you learning now? What are you curious about now? Oh, I'm curious about now. So I am, am a student to some extent of culture. So I love, um, just, or I really appreciate, culture and, and just different regions and different schools of thought. And, and especially now that I've been in business and exposed to that. So um, in my previous role, I supported um, businesses across multiple countries and there were different cultures and different ways to get the same thing done, but just again, in a different process or, or with a different school of thought behind it. So um, I think I continue to learn and to grow and, um, and to really try to interact with different cultures and understand, again, how do we work together? How do we make this relationship work? How do we coexist to some extent, mm-hmm. um, especially now that we are in such a globalized economy? And um, what is it that you would um, suggest to people that want to learn more about cultures? Is there anything particular that you're reading or any uh, particular, uh, how do you learn more about cultures? Um, so some of it is, yes, yeah, some of it's reading, some of it's studying. Um, so I love Ted talks. Uh, so if you just pick Ted talks and listen to them, so, so some of those just give you insights into, you know, how, how, again, people interact in different ways in different areas of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ted talks is great. I love things like national geographic, right? So just reading through articles and, and really understanding the interaction of people, um, yep, there's nothing, nothing more valuable than having the opportunity to go and to stay and to live or visit or really work with and interact. So for students, um, especially in your, in your group, if they're in a business environment, raise your hand if you have an opportunity to support 
and another, you know, a segment that's outside of the U.S. If you have an opportunity to support a project in China, you don't necessarily have to move there, Mm -hmm. but support them, interact with them. China and Mexico, Canada is some, is a different culture, even though we don't think about it, you know, Europe, et cetera. So I think those are just, again, just raise your hand, volunteer, add value. That's a great opportunity to do so. I love that. And if you, what would you say is, um, if you were giving someone advice about being innovative, what would you say to them? Um, I think the biggest piece to that one is, um, don't be afraid to fail. So if you, if you want to be innovative, look at what you have in front of you and think, how can we do this differently? Does it make sense what we're doing today? Will what we're doing today get us to our goals tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I think it's, it's try and learn how to, how to look around the corners, find a mentor who you feel is Mm -hmm. an innovator or has some of that innovative or disruptive thinking, um, and really listen to him, really coach or be coached by him. Um, and it doesn't have to be one. I mean, find multiple. Mm -hmm. I think that's how you learn because, you know, you don't get stuck in your same mental thought, um, and you're not necessarily learning from the same person over and over. Um, sure. But I think that's the biggest piece. What, um, and, and it may be too soon to ask you this questions, but what are some of the biggest challenges facing Millican in terms of moving forward, um, specifically in the areas of innovation? Yeah. The unknown. I mean, I, I think it's the, it's really not knowing what the future brings. And I think it's not just Millican. I mean, it's any organization right now, to be honest. Um, you know, so, so clearly the economy and, and most businesses were cruising right along, right? They're, they're um, focused yeah. on strategy, they're focused on growth, they're focused on, you know, success because so many companies have had that and then overnight almost, you know, just the train stopped. And, and, and again, I think this isn't just Milliken, this is, uh, I think, any organization that I've spoken to, whether it's universities that I've, I've listened to, whether it's museums. Um, whether it's manufacturing, it's really understanding what's coming at us, and of course, reprioritizing. Um, mm-hmm. You know where to, to where to focus your time. Well, and I think you know, I think that's too when it really it it really helps. Then when you have those people, like we were talking about earlier, who are are wearing that add value hat because they want to say, okay, what now? You know, what can we do now? So um, that kind of growth mindset which is, I think, what you were describing, uh, which should really serve you well as you are entering this company and beginning to kind of, you know, really get a strong sense of who all the players are and and so forth. Uh, Your willingness to grow and learn and add value um, will absolutely serve you well. And I know that's kind of the position that you're in right now. And I mean, you're in a pretty key role as you try to get your, your head around everything. Is that kind of how it feels? Feels like it, yes. Um, and, you know, and it's a very scary time. I mean, you, whether it's personally, whether it's professionally, you, you just don't know what's coming at you. And I think um, really supporting individuals and organizations to help them understand. Look, yes, that this we're all we're all in this together. We all have the same challenges. But again, helping them go over or get over that mental block of that this isn't the worst case. This is it's not great now, but this isn't the end. And so it's yeah. going to be better. We will get through this. It just takes a bit of fortitude and it takes a bit of perseverance to do that. Yeah. And, um, uh, I'm sure, you know, also, um, how are you, how do you capture innovation at Millican? Do you know kind of if there are some processes in place that help people kind of share ideas or, um, Okay, soon to be soon to be seen, I guess. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm sure they have their own ways. I'm sure they do. So again, new to the organization. Um, so I, I, you know, Millican again is a, a thought leader. Um, they, yeah. they have a tremendous amount of of um, of focus on and attention to technology and development and whatnot. I mean, some very very intelligent individuals who are experts in their field, um, worldwide experts in their field. Huh. Consistently pushing the boundaries of you know what's next, what what else can we do again to add value to the world around us, um, and you see that in in some of our sustainability goals, you see that in our ethics goals. I mean, mm-hmm. so all of our corporate publicly, um, our, all of our public corporate goals, I, I think support that strong innovation. Yeah, I just, 
I just saw that um, one of Milligan named one of the most ethical companies, uh, I guess, in the world or in the U.S. for sure. Um, so that's uh, that's a pretty strong uh, yeah. accolade. Multiple years running. So um, it, it's been, I think they're the only one who's been on the list ever since that award has has been created, which is tremendous. I mean, it's it's not something that Millican takes lightly. It's something that we strive for on a consistent basis. And honestly, one of the reasons why um, I decided to join the organization because they do have a focus on ethics and again, sustainability goals um, and, and really empower to, to um, influence the world around them and the community, but the world around them. Biggest surprise coming to Millican, what would it be? Is, is really how, how private the organization is. Um, so I, I made the comment in my interview um, with, with the team, you know, I went to Converse and, and you have this big, beautiful building. And again, you hear Millican all over the upstate, but you really don't know what they do other than a textile organization. You don't realize, again, that they are a thought leader and they are a tremendous innovator and they are a big um, environmental and community support. Um, and I think that's been the biggest surprise is, is really how impactful Millican is to the community and then the world around us. I, I think, and that's been a very pleasant surprise. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely thought later um, from, from way back. Um, uh, so what are, what are you um, looking to, um, maybe what is the best advice you've ever received? Oh, the best advice I've ever received. And I, I, it's a, a, a cliche to some extent, but um, a former colleague of mine and, and a good friend of yours, as a matter of fact, um, he used to tell me all the time when, when we would get into, again, change discussions and some of that uneasiness was um, smooth seas don't make great sailors. And so I'm just uh-huh. reminded that it's through those challenging times uh-huh. that you really personally and professionally you grow and you have those opportunities again to step into things that you just never realized that you could do. Um, and if I, again, look back in my career and think of all the things that I've, I've either stepped forward and raised my hand or I've been kind of tapped on the shoulder to say, hey, can you take this and accept it? They were all uncomfortable. And by the time I got through it, I was so much better of a person and professionally than I ever imagined. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. I love that. So smooth sailors, smooth seas don't make great sailors. Yes. I love that. Um, So what are you curious about now? What are you learning? What are you interested in learning? Are you, um, or have you taught yourself something lately? Anything at all? Anything at all lately. So um, I'm baking a lot more, so I seem to get better at that (laughs) personally. Now, I think I'm interested in in seeing how, again, business and, and, and organizations are going to function and operate and coordinate really once we're through with this, right? So how are we going to get through this? I think that's really what I'm most interested in, yeah. in learning and, and really just studying right now is, is what will business look like on the backside of COVID? Yeah. Um, I think it'll be, and what will society look like, right? So, I mean, what will, what will our restaurants look like? What will our shopping look like? What, what will just every aspect of our life how will it be different once we get through this? Um, and, and how will we adapt? So let's talk about adapting. How will we adapt mm-hmm. to be ready for something like this in the future? Cause clearly this is, I mean, it can happen at any point. Um, so I think that's really my current, that's just my current interest. Yeah. Top of mind. And, and it, and it certainly uh, flows right into the, your whole interest around culture. Because mm-hmm. culture is fascinating, uh, and you have an innovation center there, don't you? We do. So we have an entire innovation gallery, which is um, which is just an extraordinary thing to walk through. Um, so they have, of course, patents and and um, uh, programs and whatnot that they've they've created and founded and and supported uh, over decades, and and it's two full walls with tiles of uh, literally starting back to when Roger Milliken moved into the Southeast up until not too long ago with the Polar Tech acquisition. 
um, mm-hmm. and some of the, the IP that was brought with that. So um, it, it is, again, a, a tremendous organization. And again, I think focused on innovation and, and focused on some of that change and impact. Well, listen, I just want to thank you so much for spending some time with me. Is there any question that I should have asked you, but that I did not? Oh, you know what? One question that you did ask me, but maybe we didn't talk about on this podcast was what, what do I want to accomplish going forward? Please. There we go. So one thing that, so from a professional career or a professional status, I I think I'm, I'm good. So again, I've been very, very lucky um, in my career to have some phenomenal mentors um, and, and really just had doors open that, that I never realized, you know, could, could happen. So, and I'm, so that's been great. I, I think one of the things that I really am trying to focus on now is how do I impact the community? So where can I take some of the passions that I have with developing leaders and, and really influencing and, um, and supporting individuals, especially young women, um, but, but young people in general, um, and really who are looking for what is their next path or what is their path. But, but anyway, taking some of that passion and, and finding opportunities in the community that, to, to really, again, add, add value. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything in particular you'd like to mention with regard to some of the areas you're interested in? Uh, so currently, um, I support Jasmine Road, which yeah. is a phenomenal organization, um, and just really some of the things that that organization is doing you know, to to supporting women and helping them find a path um, along what, what do they want to do with their life, or what do they want to do next, or, or you know how can they become how can they become more self reliant, etc. So um, just I think having those conversations and interactions with that entire group has been tremendous. It's, it's really helped me. I think I've learned as much and, and been impacted as much by the organization as I hope um, to, can, to impact them. So, but, but a phenomenal group. I totally agree. It is a phenomenal group. And um, I don't know if you've made it to Jasmine Kitchen yet. I have not. I'm officially inviting you. Fantastic. Let's yeah, do it. I'm officially inviting you. I'm telling you, you will be so moved to go there and see what a beautiful job they've done with it. It's so professionally done. The food was phenomenal. And um, so we have a date. We're going to go there as soon as we can get there. And um, it's just, you'll knowing your passion for their work when you go there, it's so moving. It's just, it's just such a beautiful culmination of all the time and the effort that's gone into that organization. And we're so proud to have them in the upstate and I'm delighted that you're involved because I know that probably means at some point Millican will be involved. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing for them, but you know, it, it, it's always good for the word to be out there, you know, uh, of what they're accomplishing there, which affects our whole community. And I think the social enterprise aspect of, of you know, and that's how that, that's the structure of that organization. I'm hoping that will catch on um, throughout Greenville and Spartanburg in the upstate because I think that that really does provide opportunities for people who may have felt like they didn't have opportunities in the past. Um, so you see it happening across, across the country. Um, but I think that that's a phenomenal, just, just a phenomenal structure and, and really, again, a, a great thing to catch on around us. Yeah, yeah, I think it is as well. Um, I, I know that they have several outlets for social entrepreneurship there. Uh, so it'll be fun to see what else they do. All right. We're going to set a date and we're going to have the next part of our interview in that restaurant. that's perfect that's perfect (laughs) and I so appreciate your time Heather um I'm delighted that you're at Millican they're so fortunate to have you and um you're going to have a blast there I just know that you're going to do some really cool things and really great adding value but um I just appreciate your time and um I will uh look forward to um soon when we connect and we have lunch at Jasmine Kitchen that's perfect thanks Gail (laughs) okay thank you so much take good care Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.